Yes, we are back. Back again in Train Sim World 4. Back again continuing our adventure looking at the new lines for the first time. And this time it's off to America Land uh, where we're going to do the LA to the place I can't remember. Which is about a 2 hour and 10 minute journey. Uh, my first time doing a complete thing. I've only used the train a couple of times. Uh, we will start off by doing the train training and then do the four line run and then see if we can play around with that free roam thing uh, when we get to the other end uh, if you're watching this on the youtubes then hi i was waving at the screen again uh this coming out on a day i've got no idea which one it could be a monday uh, we'll see uh, there'll be links in the description below uh, to where you can get this game there'll be a link down there to a twitch page as well where you can watch me live on the twitchy and a link to the Discord server as well. Uh, good morning uh, to Trent. I uh, started the stream a little bit earlier than normal. Uh, a, because uh, I was bored. Uh, and B, because it is a two hour and ten minute journey. I wanted to make sure I can do it all and then have a fiddle around afterwards. Uh, so we'll start with the training. And we'll do it in the, uh, the Metro link. As you can see, I haven't done it before. Uh, so we will start with that. Uh, is an awesome sounding train i did play around with it and use it in the uh uh in the austria to germany route yesterday in this training module you will be learning to operate this emd f125 spirit diesel locomotive during this brief introduction you will be taken through the critical driving controls and performing passenger operations when you're ready to begin Climb aboard. I'm liking the fact that it's an, an American type person. And I'm liking the fact that it's diesel. I'm not sure about that noise though. We'll hear that a lot. Okay. So climb up. Sit in the engineer's seat. Of course, being American, it's on the wrong side of the, the train. But, uh, you know, we'll get over that. Doesn't have a very comfortable seat though, does it? You'll now go through the steps needed to take over this locomotive. You will need to set the generator field switch. This needs to be enabled for the locomotive to generate power. Okay, which is over here. This locomotive requires the reverser handle to be inserted before operation. It's in. Switch the front headlights on. Regardless of the time of day or weather, all locomotives must have their headlights on. Okay, they're on dim. You'll need to set the brakes to the correct mode to allow them to be controlled by this cab. Okay, set the brakes to passenger. Okay. We can now begin loading. Okay, open the doors. So yeah, we are hauling uh, passenger type carriagey things. I do like the noise this thing makes. So, doors are open. It's that noise. It's the one that's going to take some getting used to. Okay. It is time to depart. Close the passenger doors. Closing passenger doors. So, we can probably open some windows. Let a bit of that audio in. The reverser determines the direction of travel. Okay, reverse it into forward, otherwise we'd be going backwards. The master controller controls both the throttle and dynamic brakes. Dynamic brakes use the locomotive's electric traction motors to generate resistance to reduce the wear of the brake pads. Apply a small amount of throttle. Has it told us to release the brakes? No. It didn't tell us to release the brakes first. Oops. Come on, dovetail. Otherwise, we'd have been sat there going, uh, why aren't we going anywhere? Now we go somewhere because we've released the brakes. Right. Onwards.
The automatic brakes are controlled with their own handle, but will blend the dynamic brakes in the air brakes. The air brakes will apply braking force to every car in this formation. Now, release the brakes. We've already done that. Why would you tell us to get moving and then release the brakes? Okay, that's in the wrong order. That needs to be changed, surely. Okay, get moving. Oh, well, by the way, release the brakes now. We think there's an issue there somewhere. Another one on the bug list. Alright, there's 80. Coasting is a method used to efficiently maintain speed and reduce motor stress and maintenance requirements. Alright, set the controller to idle. Keeping the speed limits is important. If you begin over speeding, slow the train using the master controller's dynamic brake range. The EMD F125 is a passenger locomotive manufactured by Electromotive Diesel for the North American market. It's powered by a Caterpillar C12720V20 diesel engine rated at 4,700 horsepower and is capable of speeds up to 125 miles per hour. Which we probably won't when do. When it launched in 2017, it was the first new passenger locomotive in North America in 15 years. To date, 40 have been produced, all of which were supplied to Metrolink. The F-125 features a modern, streamlined body designed by Voslo Espana. It just looks odd. It looks like they've stuck a train body on top of a chassis. It almost looks like the train's too tall. And like it should be lowered down a bit, but you know, that's nothing compared to driving it from the other end. Okay, we've got to stop at the station. I'll bring the game audio up a little tiny bit. But yeah, very nicely done inside. It does sound good. I do like a diesel. So we will do the training and then do the four line run. Which is like two hours and eleven minutes. Which is pretty hefty for a train sim world route. Still getting bits of lag. I don't know what it's going to be like on the actual route. Hopefully better than what we've had in the last few days. I'm going to be intrigued to find out if running a Train Sim World 3 route in Train Sim World 4 is laggy. It's not just me that's experienced this, I don't think. It always seems too short as well, a train. Um, the thing we can do with this one is, which we can't see, is you can actually drive it from this end. It's actually a driver's compartment there. The only thing is you don't get the engine noise because the engine's at the other end. So it's obviously better running it engine forward because you get to hear the diesel power. Now we're going to coast our way into the station. So it's telling me not to use the automatic brake but use the dynamic brake instead. We've got an independent brake as well, so we've got lots of brakes. You are approaching the station. Begin applying a small amount of braking force using the automatic brake to bring the train to a gentle stop. Well, it's working. So stop at station. Doesn't seem to be as efficient using the single lever, but we're getting there.
Hey, that's not bad. It's not actually stopping it, though. So I've got to... I've still got to apply some brake. Nice job. The train has safely come to a stop. You can now begin loading. Yeah, so it'll slow it down. I think it's probably going to be easier just to use the separate brakes than it is to use the, the combined power handle because it won't actually stop you. It'll slow you. Good work. That concludes all the basics of operating this train. Okay, that's that's that done then. Now it's going to let us loose in the actual timetable. What can possibly go wrong? Okay, so to the trains, choose a route. So all my trains in World 3 routes haven't come over yet. Uh, so we, first night we did Peterborough to Doncaster. Yesterday uh, we did the uh, S-Bahn Vorarlberg, which is a really good line. Obviously today we're doing Antelope Valley. When I'm back on the next stream, we're going to look at the reworked uh, Neverka Dresden. And then after that, we're going to... Uh, try and bring some trains in world three trains going to start by putting hst back on peterborough to doncaster and see how that runs so we'll do this and we'll see if we can find one that is the full uh route there we go la union to lancaster two hours and 11 minutes long eek Okay, so generator field on, front headlights bright with auxiliary, that works for me. Uh, reverse the handle in and forward, doors unlocked, automatic train brake, independent brake is released, that's fine, that's fine. So yeah, we're here at LA Union Station. Two hour and eleven minute trip to Lancaster via lots of places. Let's open this window and that window. So Glendale, Burbank, Burbank Airport, where Jay Leno's garage is, for those that follow Jay Leno. Uh Sun Valley, Silom, I think it's there anyway, it's next to an airport. Uh Silmar, New Hall, Santa Clarita via Princessa okay uh, Vista Canyon Vincent Grade Palmdale and Lancaster not many stops uh, hi Connor all right uh, quiet morning okay five miles into Glendale let's release these brakes And we've got a red in 259 yards, so we've got to be careful there. All right, are we actually going to move? Uh, yes, ETS is tonight. Oh, hang on. Brake mode wasn't set to passenger. Oops. There we go. So we've got to be wary of this red. Yeah, now the brake mode said the passengers so it wasn't releasing the train brakes. It does seem as though you're sat very high up. Well, maybe because you are sat very high up. Oh, we got a yellow. Does look good. Right, are those brakes released? Yes, they are. Let's 
That's a slow exit from LA Union. It's that noise you've got to get used to. So yeah, a few stops, not a huge amount of stops, but quite a few. We've got a lot of greens. I could, do quite like that little bar display under the speed in the top right um, that shows you all the next signals. So you can actually see, and that scaling is 1.25 miles for the length of that bar. So it actually shows you what signals you've got coming up. So although the the one I've got on, the HUD, which you can turn off, shows you the next signal aspect, which is green, the fact that you can then see the ones after that, up to a mile away, I really like that. That was a police car I heard. So definitely a slow departure. So this is one of the longer, I think it's the longest passenger scenario we've ever had in a train sim world game at 2 hours 11 minutes. Um, I think there's one of the freight scenarios um, that's longer, but that's going to be slower speed. So it's going to be interesting to see, and I don't know because I haven't done any research because I'm useless, uh, what the overall length of this track is. Right, there we go, we can now find the increased speed. I do like the sound of a diesel. Alright, and round to the left towards Glendale we go. Yeah, sometimes speeds are nice when they're slow. I'm not a fan of freight stuff. I do prefer passenger stuff. Right, the LA River where a lot of films and car chases and stuff have been filmed. Isn't that where Postman Pat lives? What, Glendale? No, I think it's Greendale. It's close. Isn't this where... I'm sure there's a route for Train Sim Classic. I could be wrong that goes over this. Am I wrong with that? Or is it a route for this? Or am I getting confused? I might, no, I think I'm getting confused with the, Ameri with the New York one. It does sound really good though. Yeah, I think the reasoning that this is going to take a little while isn't necessarily because it's a long route, but because I don't think our speed is going to be that high. Yeah, the, the LA River, which is that down there, has been used in a lot of films. A hell of a lot of films for car chases and things, uh, and boat chases and stuff. Hi, Hawkland. Um. Well, it's the Blackpool one, mainly, that I'm looking forward to. I was impressed with the one we did last night, the Austria-Germany one. That was quite good. That's one I do again. 
this has got the makings to be one that you'd probably do multiple times or bits of it. So I think this is a, a line of many pieces. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that new physics system. So we'll get a bit of up-down motion. But yeah, looking rather good. Yeah, I tried to use a 323 last night, but couldn't quite get it fired up. Styling it from cold and dark isn't easy. So that's why the whole uh, free roam train swapping thing is going to be a lot better uh, with diesels. I am noticing a lot more lag. We've got lag on this route. I tried the Neverka Dresden. Uh, this morning, thinking that that was going to be a Train Sim World 3 route in Train Sim World 4, but improved. Um, but that's still laggy. So hopefully that's things they're going to fix. Yeah, this isn't a slow route, but nice getting out in the uh, in the burbs, as it were. No, it's not laggy on console. It's fine on console. It's just PC. So it's a bit of an optimization thing, I think. I need to do some tweaking on the PC version. Right, we're due at Glendale at 951. I say this is a long route, two hours and eleven minutes. So I suspect by the time we get to the end, we're gonna be quite late. Uh, how am I liking it? The game overall, I, I think, is going to be... There's a bit... The free roam thing I really like. I'm looking forward to seeing what the PC editor brings us. Um, the Peterborough to Doncaster route, I've got to say, I was wholly disappointed by. Um, in reality, it's quite a boring route. In this, it's quite a boring route. The Azuma does nothing for me. Um, the, the other high street high-speed train from... Um, southeastern high speed doesn't do um, I did enjoy the route that we did last night um, and say a little branch line thing spurring off on that that makes it interesting again a longer route but I think you would do that more frequently this has got the makings to be quite interesting I am taking it slowly. I've got to get used to the train for the first few stops. But I'm liking the fact that this is diesel. You do seem a very long way up. It does seem like they've just shoved the body of a train on top of, like, a wagon chassis. Or chassis, as our American cousins call them. Which is wrong. Um, so it does seem very high. Not as high as when you drive it from the rear. Because there's a... There's a driving position back there that you can drive it from as well. Uh, we won't because you don't get the engine noise then. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if, like the Flying Scotsman thing, I think we will do the 100 mile an hour thing. Um, I, I will attempt it. Um, but then I, I don't think I'd ever use the Scotsman again. And um, we've been saying this the last couple of days, with that sort of scenario, would you actually go back and do it again? No. 
Um, you like the colour of the train. You spelled colour wrong there. Um, and I think the whole um, Peter Britta Doncaster thing, yeah, doing it at HST, which I will do, is going to make it slightly better. But I don't think it's a route that I would go back and do a lot. Okay, we are arriving at Glendale. Late, but, you know, it's an American train. It'll probably be three hours late by now. I'm surprised we haven't had to stop and wait for some sort of freight traffic to go past. No, pantaloons an old Edwardian thing. So yeah, if I show you the rear of the train, you can actually drive this thing from here. From in there. Which is a long way up. Look how high that is up there. Like <laughs> driving a, a, a double-decker bus from upstairs. It's like, wow. Right, locking doors. What do you call sidewalks? Footpaths. Or path. Right, Burbank downtown. Okay, release the brakes. Apply some power. Does sound good. Um, yeah, I think it'll be October. They're, they're showing a lot of screenshots of Blackpool, Preston, and that's going to be brilliant. Going from Blackpool South to Blackpool, Blackpool North, a long way round in a pacer, that's going to be good. Um, 36 months and more of being deranged uh, indeed uh, thank you very much Liam All right we've got a yellow in 1.6 miles so that should appear as soon as it gets to 1.2 miles that'll appear on that little bar below There you go. So we'll keep the speed low in case we get a red after this. Well, I don't know how close the train line goes to the front at Blackpool. I'm guessing you'll be able to see the, the tower. It's definitely laggy, isn't it? I reckon it's a whole train sim world 4 thing with the lag. Although it isn't on console, and not everyone's getting it on PC. Uh, I tried it on my laptop uh, last night, which is a i7 with a 1050 in, uh, and was laggy. So I'm hoping they've just got to do some optimization. All right, what are we going to get after this yellow? Hopefully not a red. But graphically it's looking good, like the, the feeling of the town. I'm guessing it's what it's like going from Glendale to Burbank.
Right, another yellow in 1.8 miles, so we'll keep the speed low, which is probably why this is going to take quite a while, because we're due at uh, Burbank in less than a minute. That's not going to happen. Almost sounds like someone's flushing a toilet behind us every like three seconds with that noise. No smog. Well, no, there is that. We are on the outskirts, I suppose. Right, so two miles we got to stop, 2.2 miles we got to reduce speed, so we'll keep it at this and cruise our way in. Say this is a long route time-wise, two hours and 11 minutes. Which is one of the reasons why I started early. So it's a combination of someone flushing a toilet and someone making a coffee. One of those posh coffee machine things. Do I have custody this weekend? Uh, no, not for the next uh, few weekends. I have peace. Yeah, it is one of those, you know, really high-end Italian, you know, coffee machines with all the knobs and dials and things. It's like s someone's making one back there somewhere. It's obviously a, a noise, something to do with a pressure relief system or something. So I'm guessing it must be how these uh, trains actually sound. It's definitely a weird noise. That sounds more like a toilet flushing. I know. Right. Into uh, Burbank. Yeah, I'm not sure it's Burbank Airport or there's another airport where uh, Jay Leno um, has got his garage right, like, well, within the airport and basically old hangars. It might be Burbank. Will there be a GTA 5 Part 2? Uh, there will be. Yeah, we're definitely going to be very late on this trip, aren't we? Japan, this is madness. Oh, they wouldn't, you'd be sacked. I was out on trains the other weekend. There were, there were trains that were running like 57 minutes late. You know, if your train's less than 10 minutes late, it's on time. That's some lag. Right, in we come. Into Burbank. I'm guessing that's Henkan, H3NKAN92. Uh, thanks very much for the follow. Oh, the, new, the wacky armor to, I call it the wacky armor to Shakira line. Um, 
That'd be good in this. Nickname for Henrik. Ah, okay. Yeah, Sh Sakari, Shakira, same thing. Lock doors. Eh, we're only a couple of minutes late. That's fine. Right, Burbank Airport, 2.8 miles. Does sound really good. All right, let's give it a bit of the beans. Yeah, Nittertal Barn. I need to do that route again with the German pacer thing. That's so cool. Is there's so many routes you know we're going to get i think in the next 12 months we're going to get 12 new routes basically from either dovetail or third party developers at the moment i'm going to get five new uh uk routes well i don't know if anybody watched last night's stream but i uh i spawned in the 801 onto the german line to try and use it because it's an electric train overhead got in the cab and the display in the cab said next station Swindon uh, the train was going to Paddington so I don't know if that's a planned Great Western Express extension that we've got coming and they're going to do the 800 and that's somehow in the train already but that would be damn cool. The first line extension. London to Bristol. Well, they did hint at it, didn't they? Saying Reading to Bristol. Obviously, my hometown being Swindon. Um, I'd love to be able to then do... And again, if they then work that, if you had both lines. So if you got Paddington to Reading and then Reading to Bristol, could you then do Paddington to Bristol? Which is going to be like two hours. Exactly, with the 800. You know, it's basically the same cab. It'll have to go diesel though from Chippenham. Because there's no overheads from Chippenham. So that makes it more interesting. Obviously Swindon, the home of Great Western Railway. With the railway works here. Temple Meads being such an iconic station. Which would be awesome. You've got the box tunnel um, on the way down. That'd be pretty cool. And then does that give an opportunity then to also put Bristol Parkway in there with the possibility then of doing the seven tunnel eventually going through to Cardiff. Oh, yeah. Oh, here we go. Uh, spamming bots incoming. Yay, we love bots. Bots are oh, awesome. Oh, yeah. Bots are my favourite thing in the world. So we'll just get rid of the alert thing for a little while. There we go. They won't affect us at all. Uh, right. Unfortunately, in the middle of that, maple syrup uh, followed... So, we do apologise. We'll give it a couple of minutes and we'll turn the noise back on again. Right, anyway, we're approaching Burbank Airport. So, yeah, so are we going to get the Great Western Express extension? Uh, no, Artful, I haven't.
Right, can we come to Burbank? There we go, put the alerts back on again now. I was only running about a minute or so late. Very, very slowly into the station. So the airport's over there. Got a freeway going down there. That's quite a grade coming in here. Lots of European cars. Well, America does have a lot of European cars. A motorhome there. A couple of motorhomes there. I really wish Unreal would sort out these camera collisions. So you don't keep zooming in unexpectedly. Every day is Taco Tuesday. No, it's not. Uh, right, lock doors. We've got an 80 limit now. I wonder what the distance is to the next station, though. 1.7 miles. Okay, we're not going to get much chance to build up any speed, are we? I wonder if we'll find a hot dog stand. Yeah, I remember that. There is a hot dog stand there, look. I think he's going to sell many there. Obviously at the end of the station, I suppose. That's definitely really laggy. I hope they sort this out soon. Maybe with an update when the full version comes out for everybody else in a couple of days' time. Then I started breaking that early. So, yes, yeah, so we've got Sun Valley. Silmar, New Hall, Santa Clarita, Via Princesa, Vista Canyon, Vincent Grade, Palmdale, and Lancaster. So not many stops left. So there's going to be some distances, I think, between some of these. I've seen some stuff stopped here for quite a while. We did. We just couldn't get moving. That darn hill. Yeah, tonight, by the way, uh, back with some trucking and tunes uh, carrying on in ETS2 uh, from that there, Cardiff. Uh, playing some songs, starting with the letter S for song. So that'll be between uh, 6 and 6.30 this evening. Well, Larwood was going through songs and stopped at 32. 
which has a lot of songs starting with the letter S. I'm sure there'll be an Ed Sheeran song in there somewhere as well, because there's got to be. I always think this is the most laggy one we've had so far. That we're probably not going to stop at. Oh, I don't know, it might be alright. Hey, that's not bad. It does seem odd that it's only like a what a four car train and yet we've got this big loco unless we're going to get a lot of climbs and stuff where it needs this power or is it just a typical um, American thing where they just overpower everything stick a big engine in it and that'll make it better yeah we need a 6.7 litre diesel to pull this pickup truck no you don't Uh, Silmar San Fernando. I don't know what the hype was about with the Vectron. Uh, I used it briefly and it was like, yeah, it's just an electric train. I just prefer diesel. Are we actually going to be able to get some speed up this time? Well, yeah, I'm guessing they got to cater for all their markets. This is big in the UK. Uh, it's very popular in Germany. I think it's popular in America as well. So they've had to cater to all three of their big markets. So a German line, well, a little bit of German line, one town. A straight bit of track in the UK, virtually. And then this in America. I can finally get a bit of speed up. Without the lag, maybe. And we got a yellow in two miles and a 75 in two miles. We're not going to get much above that anyway. Yeah, the lag you're seeing, by the way, isn't stream lag, it is game lag. It seems to be on every single route so far for Train Sim World 4. Uh, I've never experienced that on Trains in World 3. Is it me or do all American trains sound just so samey? I think it's because it's a big engine that's not wow game uh, it's a big engine that's not working hard whereas here um, like the HSTs and our stuff it's a smaller engine that we make it work so you hear that uh, rev change it's doing a lot more work so it's designed for torque rather than speed
yeah, it, it's better on this. So I tried the Neverka Dresden um, earlier, and the, it was just loading in just in front of the train. But they definitely need a lot more, op a, a lot more optimization, a hell of a lot. So I was on the pre-release build. Now I'm on the normal release build. So I thought there might have been an update. It is quite good that it's single track though. Although that bit of track obviously doesn't go anywhere. It's not even a passing point. Yeah, I don't know. But it's not like this is worse than Peterborough. And this is worse than last night. It's where there's just so much scenery going on here. Or whether they're smaller tiles. I don't know. I really hope they improve that lag. I am going to be interested to see next week, um, or maybe into next Saturday. Wow, running a train sim while, come on, game, uh, running a train sim while three route in train sim world four to see if it's laggy. Almost might do a back-to-back -back comparison on a, on a stream. Run a route in Train Sim World 4, run the same route in the same train in Train Sim World 3, and see if we get lag. If we get it in 4. Because if we do, then it's 4. And then you know what? Temporarily, uh, I may just shift back to 3. Until they sort 4 out. Because this is. I'm not saying it's unplayable, but it's just annoying. So if every 15 seconds you're getting lag. Or less than that. Right, Sailmar San Fernando is next. At least managed to get a little bit of speed up then. And we're running a minute or so behind schedule. So you almost caught up a bit of time then as well. Pronounce Sima. Well, they should spell it that way then. Don't stop. Actually, I break too early then. I'm looking to the right. Yeah, a minute or so late. That's not bad. Yeah, it's even laggy moving around, look. That snap. So no wonder we're getting a lot of lag. And it's not my PC, because other people are getting it as well. I did check my graphics drivers, everything's up to date. Right, locking doors. We've now got rain. Right, new hall. Oh, we're running backwards. Yeah, forwards would be quite nice. There we go. Right, have we got some sort of wiper?
Don't really need them, but we'll put them on anyway. And would this driver actually be in the cab on their own? Oh, in the UK, it's common for a driver to be in the cab on their own. Does sound good. I will give it that. So is this going to be a slow ascent? Well, it's called Antelope Valley, isn't it? So we're going to eventually make our way out of the valley. This is definitely quite a long section of single track as well. I don't think there was a passing point at that last station. So unless this speed limit up here is reducing it down to 45 for some points. Slow me down without me actually having to brake. That'd be quite nice. 45. There we go. Put a little bit of power back in. Yes, yeah, so we've got a passing point here then. And we've got a yellow. Hopefully at some point we'll either have another train in one of these passing points or we'll have to stop for another train. See how well it's timetabled. Ah, it's obviously because of this bend we've got this reduced speed. Give it the beans. We can't. We've got a speed limit to stick to. We've got slowing down at 35. Actually, another 45. Yeah, I'm liking the route. Yeah, I definitely think we're getting less lag as we're getting less scenery. Also, we got a lot of lag on the Doncaster to Peterborough uh, when we had trains coming towards us. So when it's trying to load in too much, it can't cope. whether that's an unreal thing or if it just it means this needs more optimization so things that what's down there hopefully there's other routes of this hopefully it's not just this line I haven't actually looked at the line in great detail to see where else it goes. Let me have a look at this next stop. Have a look at the line map. All right, we've got to slow down to 35 around here. So yeah, I can now see why it's a two hour and 11 minute route. 
I bet it's not that long. Doncaster to Peterborough was the longest route they've done at just under 80 miles. I don't know how long this route is from LA Union to Lancaster. I bet it's not 80 miles. I wouldn't be surprised if it's any more than like 60. We got a 30 coming up now. Yeah, I do like it that it's single track. What's going on here? Some sort of yard? Yeah. Antelope Valley is 76.6 .6 miles. Blimey. Okay. We'll see at the end of this. It's good if it is. It's only three miles shorter than Doncaster to Peterborough. Thank you. Right, so yellow, yellow. So next one's yellow as well. That's a lot of freeways above us, isn't it? I'm guessing they're freeways. And that's a tunnel. obviously got 30 in bit through the tunnel it looks quite tight in there doesn't it there's not a lot of space around the train Still getting lag in here. That makes me think it's not a a graphical thing. Yeah, if we've lost a bit of the train. Well, I don't know. This cab's quite high, isn't it? Yeah, I think this needs a lot of optimization. As I said, I, I will try if when we do a train sim world three route in this, we're still getting lag. I will do a back to back same route in three and four um, and see if we get lag. I've never noticed this in any Trains in World 3 route. Hopefully it's something that they fix. Because look, that's just madness. We're in a tunnel. It's not like it's rendering anything, is it? This is a long tunnel as well. They're not going very fast through it. But the end, I see a light. There is quite literally a light at the end of the tunnel.
Starlight Express is coming back. Blimey, that's the one on roller skates, isn't it? Right, we've got a red. Oh, there's another train waiting to come down the other way, look. Yeah, so that's running backwards. So going back into LA, they run backwards. Dancing on Ice will be back soon. Yeah, I won't be watching that. Right, we've got to watch the speed now as we go down. Come on, bring the speed down. So we're still in the commuter belt, really, aren't we? We're still probably, what, 40 minutes outside of LA? So people will be doing this journey backwards and forwards to work every day. I couldn't think of anything worse. I moan about my, like, 12-minute commute if I get held up somewhere. Fair play to all those people that get on an hour-long train like into a major city and then have to get on an underground train and then have to walk and then get to their desk and then sit there for eight hours and then do the same thing in reverse. No thanks. Right. New Hall is down there. Slightly disconcerting where the engine revs pick up when you're braking. I just wouldn't, you know, unless, even if you're paid a load of money, it's that work life balance, isn't it? Why would you spend probably two and a bit hours getting to work and then two and a bit hours coming home and then working seven hours or eight hours? You're out of the house 13 hours a day. No thanks. You know, leave home at 7 a.m., get home at 8 p.m. Or leave home at 6 a.m., get home at 7 p.m. No, no. You get three hours at home, you go to bed. At least I get five hours at home in the evenings before I go to bed. Right, we have arrived squeakily at New Hall. Doors are being unlocked. You have a 25 minute commute. I think, I think under half an hour is fine. Because, you know, finish work, within half an hour you're back home. That's doable, isn't it? You finish at five, you're home by half past five. You know, if you start at eight, you leave the house just before half past seven, that's fine. Right, Santa Clarita. You know, I leave the house at 10 past 7. I'm at work at 20 past. I leave work at 5. I'm home before quarter past.
Right, stops wise, we got Santa Clarita, Via Princesa, Vista Canyon, Vincent Grade, Palmdale, and Lancaster. So a 40 limit. Hopefully this rain stops. Uh, I think we're almost going to be ahead of time as well now. Because we're not due at the next stop for another five minutes. We've gone from being late to being early. Oh god, okay. Breaking. I went from a 39 mile an hour speed limit to now give me a 70. my lags I slip time yeah these speed limits need some work so I'm sure I just saw 39 miles an hour up there there it is what 39 miles an hour again where'd the 70 go yeah this really needs some <laughs> some proper beta testing it's like the training video when it tells you to put the throttle on and then like five minutes later, oh, you can release the brakes now. What? No, no, get them in the right order. Right, slowing down then to the 39. slowly oh there we go brakes finally kick in odd speed limit 39 miles an hour Yeah, I'm definitely interested to see what the distance is when we get to the end. Say, so the Peterborough to Doncaster is the longest route they've done. I think 79 miles. 79 point something miles. So if this is 76, that's uh, definitely impressive. Now we've got to climb again. I can see now why it's got this loco at the front. I think to cope with the, the hills. Does it actually stop raining? Can I turn the... I don't think it's rainy enough that I actually need the wipers. You know, 1.8 grade isn't too bad. Yeah, 
it's definitely up and down. There's a lot of flooding down there, which is quite a cool shot, maybe. Would have been a cool shot. There you go. Uh, we are doing a diesel thing in the America land. Five hundred yards from Santa Clarita. finding a route it's not bad actually apart from the lag which is a theme of this week basically trains in world lag unless you're on console We're actually on time in the end. Unusual for me, I know. <laughs> Passing on the trains yet? Yeah, there was one. It still definitely looks like they've just taken a normal train and shoved it up on top of a chassis. Because it, it just looks, it looks overly tall. It's like they've just ch taken a body and like shoved it on top of something else. A bit like the original Pacer. So like, yeah, we just take this body and put it on top of a, a wagon chassis. Right, so we've got three miles to Via Princess. Strange name for a uh, old princessa. A strange name for a place. I'm guessing it's an actual place. Hello there. All right, so you got a third. Oh no, I'm sure we, I, I just saw a seven. What is going on with these speed limits? I'm sure I just saw a thirty, but now it's saying seventy. Yeah, they need to look at these speed limits. Why does it stop raining? Who's the princess? Derek. We got a yellow, but we have got an increased speed limit. Does sound good. Indeed, I haven't seen any antelopes yet. There's been no warnings of antelopes crossing yet. We're certainly not going to be at this next stop on time. Yeah. 
It's like the other one, isn't it? A sign that says "Beware falling rocks." What are you supposed to do with that information? If you if you're driving along and the rocks coming above you, there's not a lot you can do. So I almost don't want to know. Definitely out in the burbs now, aren't we? Yeah, sign not in use. Well, it is. It's telling me it's in use. It's in use telling me it's not in use. But do you... So when you pass one of those matrix signs that hasn't got anything on it, do you panic then and go, what if that's supposed to be telling me something? It hasn't told me it's not in use, which means it's in use. <laughs> yes, the old ones are the best. Yes, yeah, slow children playing. Exactly. Ethan and Crispy. It's only because neither of them are watching. No, he's out, went out in London somewhere. I'm surprised we still have midget gems. Yeah, I'm surprised that hasn't been changed. Right, we got a mile, we got a red. Our next station, though, is just up here. Needs to stop raining. Via Princessa. Oh, we're not really stopping at this, are we? Actually, no, we might be alright. Brakes on this are actually surprisingly good. A bit like that thing we were in last night. Unlike the Azuma, which the brakes are awful. Seems like a station in the middle of nowhere. This is like a parkway type station. Why are they stood there? This is where I'm supposed to. Oh, there we go. So this is where I'm supposed to stop. It's got Voyager vibes at um, at Tickover. Right, lock doors. Right, two miles to Vista Canyon. We've now got a yellow, which means there's something in front of us. Probably another train. And a 79 mile an hour speed limit. And then a 25 mile an hour speed limit. So we're going off round here to the right. No. Well, I was hoping with the pacer that's coming with Blackpool, um, Blackpool to Preston, that it'd have been nice to get all versions of the pacer. I think that would have been quite cool, but obviously they're only going to give you the version that actually ran on the line. But I'm still so looking forward to the pacer. That will be incorporated into some sort of Christmas stream.
I think the idea being we take the pacer from as far south in the UK as we can to as far north in the UK as we can over a couple of days. So we start with it down in Cornwall, which now we know we can just chuck it in a um, timetable run. Yeah, Pacer UK Tour. Oh, okay, we're going down here. Oh, I was going to look at the map, wouldn't I? We'll have a look at this next stop. I don't know why we're coming around this way. It just seems to loop round, unless this is the way this going we go this way coming back we go that way yeah because it just does links back in again seems strange Yeah, that did sound quite cuckoo-esque. So if we now come off the main line back there to go round here then and stop to wait to go back on it again. Although no, because it's the... Oh, unless this station is off the main line. That's the track we're on, the one to our left. I don't know why it's brought us that way. Yeah, so this station seems to be on well, this one's one way and one's the other way, of course. It just seems an odd way. Why couldn't they just carry straight on with that? It just seemed a bit weird. I'm guessing that's how it actually is. Obviously a reasoning for that. We're only about a minute late as well. Slightly overshot, but these are passengers are now in front of the carriages. Oh, you look at the track. So that's where we are. So that's the bit we've just gone round. So we started all the way back down there. And we're going, I'm guessing, all the way up there.
here maybe is our end so yeah it's not like there's many like branch lines there's this little bit down here and here but it's not like there's a, a huge branch line you can go off and explore we're still all the way here but we've only got Vincent Grade, Palmdale, Lancaster. We've only got three more stops to do. 11.51. We've got another, that's another hour to do three more stops. There's going to be a lot of, well, 19 miles to the next one. So there's going to be a lot of, there is an active traction lock. Power is currently not available. Okay. There we go. Right, 19 ma males? 19 miles. Uh, good afternoon. How are some words? Yeah. So, half an hour to do 19 miles. Blimey. Okay, so that's not going to be very rapid, is it? Forty miles an hour? Average? Okay, so back on the main line, we got a 75, then we're down to a 55. I think we're definitely heading out of town now. Alright, at least we can speed up to the 55. Yeah, I can certainly see why we've got this power now, so we can cope with these inclines. So, one minute it's saying we've got a 55 coming up, and now it's saying we've got a 39. So am I going to suddenly... Yeah, we got 55 now. Did I miss that? I'm sure we're a bit of a way off from the 55. Okay, we'll see what happens. At least we get to see the uh, scenery. Seems very deserty and very hilly. Yes, yeah, so we've already been going an hour and a bit on this room. We've still got an hour to go. Can't, if, if this is the no, no, 39 is going to bring the speed limit down isn't it? so if we're doing this sort of speed how is it going to take us half an hour to do 17 miles I watched a YouTube video earlier um, which was the, um, the longest continuous train journey you can do in the UK Aberdeen to Penzance um and they did it 
guy on the train racing a guy on a motorbike. Um, which at first I thought was quite interesting. Both left at the same time, level pegging. Um, got ruined slightly for me by the fact that whenever you looked at the guy's speed on the motorbike, he was speeding. Uh, at one point doing like 81, which made instantly an unfair race to me. But anyway, and surprisingly the motorbike won by like half an hour. Hmm, wonder why he was speeding. Um, but the, the guy on the train, he was in first class because it's 13 hours on a train. Um, and there were six other people in his first class carriage all doing the Aberdeen to Penzance thing as a bucket list type thing to take the UK's longest train journey without changing. I think I could cope with it in standard class. I think as long as you've got a, a power socket you know, you can buy drinks and snacks or you take some with you. There's toilets on board. As long as you've got a couple of films to watch or you've got some company or a couple of good books, cope with that. The only downside to it, I thought, was that you've got to get... Uh, no, it was on a Voyager. Um, you've got to get to Aberdeen and then you've got to get back from Penzance. So it almost makes it a three-day event because it left at like eight o'clock in the morning, I think it it was, and it arrived in Penzance like nine thirty-five at night. So you'd have to day one travel to Aberdeen, stay overnight. Day two, you then travel from Aberdeen to Penzance, stay overnight. Day three, travel home. So it was like 200 quid in standard class to do the whole journey, which I didn't think was too bad. Like 400 pound in first class. Then you've got to get to Aberdeen, stay overnight. So it's probably another 200 quid. And then you've got to stay overnight in Penzance and get back again. That's probably another 200 quid. So you're probably talking 600 pound plus snacks. You're probably talking, I don't know, close to 700 pound to do one train journey. Yeah, two hundred pound for a ticket, fine. I suppose if you can get a cheap flight to Aberdeen. Ideally, what you want to do is—I uh, don't know—if you're on holiday in Cornwall, would you then fly up to Aberdeen? So Newquay Airport um, up to Aberdeen, maybe have to change somewhere, I should imagine, and then get the train back the following day, and then continue your holiday. So take like two days out of your holiday. Or could you do the... Is there anything in Aberdeen? It's supposed to be quite nice. Or could you do the sleeper? Could you do the Caledonia sleeper? From London. Overnight north. Could you then get to Aberdeen for the train down to Newquay? And then, because the overnight train to Penzance only goes, only runs overnight from London. It doesn't go overnight in the other direction, I don't think. So I'm sure it just runs back empty during the day. And then does the same thing again. Um... Because could you combine it then with the overnight sleepers? <laughs> yeah, what well, have you got to Aberdeen 10 minutes late? Yeah. It's definitely very twisty around here now. And a bit of a climb. We have only done three miles in the last six minutes. But speed limit is increasing after this bend or after this tunnel. Up to 44. Wow.
There are two Night Riviera series. One for Paddington to Penzance. The other one Penzance to Paddington. They pass each other at somewhere. Well, yeah, because it gets into Penzance at like 6am. The other one must leave Penzance at like 10 or 11. And that then becomes the one... So they both sit around all day. Yeah, this is a snake-like part of the map. That makes that interesting then. So does it doesn't they don't run on weekends though, do they? And I think the the Pal the Aberdeen to Penzance only runs on like a Saturday or something now. It doesn't run during the week, so you couldn't link the two. Because if you could, it would be quite cool if you could get the overnight from London up to Edinburgh and then get to that arrives at like six a.m. If you could get to Aberdeen. Um, in time for the train to go back to Penzance and then that arrives before the overnight back to London so you spend a night on the train, all day on the train and a night on the train so say you travelled up on the ok they don't sleep it only runs weekdays as well oh, that's a pain isn't it See, someone should think of that. Because I'd do that. Imagine leaving here on a Friday, get, getting a train into London, doing the overnight, waking up on Saturday morning in Edinburgh, getting on a train to Aberdeen, train from Aberdeen all the way down to Penzance, getting there at like 9 o'clock on Saturday night, getting on the overnight sleeper on a Saturday night, um, getting back into London on a Sunday morning, going home done engineering work you imagine that pulling up at Penzance and there's a, a rail replacement bus service you're overnight so stuck on a coach overnight back to London I do want to do the the Caledonia sleeper and the uh, the other one the night Riviera my whole thought with them is that journey down into Penzance which I've still not done by train you want to be on the left side of the train obviously because you want to see the, the views coming into Penzance if you're in your, your cabin the cabin on the train you're not going to be seeing that you're going to be asleep and once you're in those little cabin things it's not like you can go and sit anywhere the only place you've got is your bed so you basically you get on the train, you go in your little compartment, and you stay there until the train arrives. You get you go out your compartment, you get off the train. This is definitely twisty. Yeah, press 3 for exterior view. It, it doesn't work in real life. You can't just look outside unless you've got a webcam set up somewhere. I'm liking this route, though. We are about to drop down more speed. Down to 29 miles an hour. With some foliage in the track. Still laggy though, even out here. And we got rain again. It's raining again. So I'm guessing we're about to get more twisty. Yeah, 
Yeah, I definitely did it uh, this way round and not the other way round, which in reality, looking at the AI traffic, it runs engine forward on the way there, on the way to Lancaster, and engine at the back on the way back. So you just control the engine remotely from the other end. I'm not a fan of those. Mainly because you can't hear the engine. Yeah, that's definitely twisting. In fact, it's single track as well. So somewhere up here, because we probably are running late, we're going to pass another train at some point. sentence made no sense. Hello, all bit Kate. Be out, not be out over week. For over week. Yeah. Maybe don't use text to, text to uh, speech to text. The new Kate is. So I was thinking the 17 miles or it was we had to do I think in 31 minutes to do it. I thought we'd be ahead of time. We've still got 10 miles to go. Seventeen miles to do ten minutes. Mm. Seventeen miles to do ten minutes? No. Wow. Seventeen minutes to do ten miles. I'm definitely interested to see when we get to the end uh, what the total length of this was. What did we say? It was someone said it was seventy-six miles. They reckoned. Um. Obviously the. Peterborough to Doncaster is the longest one that Dovetail have done at 79 miles. I think the one we did last night, the Austria-Germany one, wasn't that long. I did think that this was only 2 hours and 11 minutes because we have in slow speed sections. Which, you know, these last three stations have taken, or going to take over an hour of that. Which is good, because it does give you a long route. I think looking at the timetable, though, you can do bits of it. So you haven't got to do all of it. got a 45 coming up so it might gain a little bit of speed still got 15 minutes though to do nine miles well yeah I, it's just, um, American freight stuff I'm not keen on 
Although this sort of reminds me, this section, of doing a freight run because you've got slow speed, twisty tracks and a long distance. But the first part of this are quite light. I'm glad I did it LA to Lancaster. So I think if I'd have done Lancaster to LA, we'd have had an hour of only three stops. And all downhill, and that would have been tougher. So definitely doing LA to Lancaster is better. Out of the three new routes for Train Sim World 4, I think my favourite was the one last night, the Austria-Germany one. Uh, this, surprisingly, is number two. Uh, least favourite, unsurprisingly, is uh, Peterborough to Doncaster. I just found it boring. And yeah, I'll go back and do it again in HST. And we will go back and do it um, in the Flying Scotsman to do the whole 100 mile an hour thing. Other than that, I can't see me spending any time in it. Yeah, but even when we get a stopping 158, are the stations there? I didn't really pay much attention to see if the in-between stations, if they are, if there are any, uh, are there. Oh, they are there. Right, well, that's, well that makes it better then. Well, that could then make it a longer route. That could probably be a couple of hours in a 158 or hour and a half, maybe, in a 158 doing Peterborough to Doncaster. I know someone said um, that when the HST transfer is over, there's going to be timetables for the HST. So when all the routes transfer over on Tuesday, I will have a look and see if there is some HST stuff. So the plan is, obviously tonight we're back with some trucking, tomorrow afternoon on the farm, um, and then I'm back on Tuesday night with more Trains in World 2, th no, Trains in World 4, uh, where we'll do the Neverka Dresden, the reworked route in that. Um, all my routes are transferred over then, and then Wednesday night we'll then do um, Peterborough to Doncaster in the HST and see what that's like. Thursday night next week, then it'll be OMSI. Friday night is balls. Next Saturday lunchtime, uh, more trains in World 4. So that's me back on the lunchtime for the next probably four weeks at least. Um, got no days out planned. Um, and next Saturday night, maybe some more trucking. We will see. Yeah, there's already skins out for the uh, the 801. Thing is, if people are doing... That's a lot of lag. If people are doing the 800, you can't really run it on the Great Western Express line because there's no overheads. And the model we've got in the game has only got the single diesel engine just as a backup and not the three diesel engines that the 800 has that it can run on so until we get an official 800 you can't really run it on the Great Western Express and I think based on what we found and again not confirmed in that you know when we plonked the train down on the line yesterday the, the display in the 800 or 801 said Swindon um, next station Swindon destination Paddington I think it said Chippenham and Bath on there as well so does that mean we're going to get an extension is that going to be the first one where Dovetail have extended an existing line because electric only goes as far as Chippenham so you'd get Reading, Didcot, Swindon, Chippenham, Bath, Bristol. Um, and then you'd have to change to diesel at Chippenham, which means they'd need to do the proper 800.
thing is, it's only for Train Sim World 4, isn't it? The 801. So all your routes from Train Sim World 3 won't transfer across across until Tuesday. So you can't use the 801 yet. That's why we've been struggling with the whole free roam thing, putting trains down that you can jump into, because the electric ones, it's difficult to get them actually connected and working with the overheads. Um, so you need diesel stuff. So we had this running last night on that Austria-Germany route, and that worked fine. So I think we will experiment with that a bit on Wednesday. So we'll do Peterborough to Doncaster and then plonk the HST down and stick that in on a timetable run. I don't know how well that's going to work, Art for You could try. Well, I thought that 17 miles in 30 minutes, we were going to be there very early, but we've still got eight and a half minutes. We've got six miles to do. Does it like it's flattening out a bit now, though? Yeah, I haven't seen a single antelope. Unless they've all just run away. Oh, two miles, we got a yellow. I've sort of got used to the, uh, the toilet flushing coffee making machine sounds now. I'm guessing it's just some sort of pressure relief valve. It's just building air and then releasing it. And as a driver you probably just zone it out. Speed it up a little bit. <laughs> Someone's suffering a cold. It could be. So are we going to have to stop for another train? Or is another train waiting for us up here? It is yellow. And then we get that four miles is as the crow flies. So as we're bending round, it could be more than that track distance wise. Yeah, I'm liking this route though. Despite the lag.
it's definitely twisty. I should imagine it would be a really nice route to actually do in real life. Quite scenic. If you like desert and mountain. So we've got Vincent Grade, uh, Palmdale, and then Lancaster to go. So that is a hell of a full line run. As all we've done on this stream before that is the training. Which was, what, 10 minutes, if that. So two hours and eleven minutes for the four line runs, quite good. another yellow I think that's going to be at the end of the passing point or passing place coming into the station two miles to go How long left on the route? Um, about another 20 minutes, I think. Oh, yeah. And thank you very much for the follow. It'll be tough doing the credits at the end of this, because we had a, a bot attack earlier. Yay. Gotta love them bots. It's definitely a long old climb up. I, I am glad I did it this way round. I think if you do Lancaster to LA, you've got to be on the brakes a lot and be prepared for the first hour just to be three stops. And then it gets busy. Yeah, definitely an impressive route. I am pleased with the fact that it is a longer route. Because sometimes an hour just isn't enough. And we've been saying that for the last 12 months. Because the time you just relax into it, it's like, oh. Okay. Finally, I'll stop. We've certainly seen one train, I think, going the other way. Okay, 
it might not be a very frequent service. Hourly, maybe? So I thought we'd have passed at least two. Well, no, I, I still like the 166, but yeah, the Pacer will rule supreme. It will be going on every single route at some point. And yeah, I do plan on doing something between Christmas and New Year. Um, taking the Pacer on a UK tour from as far south as we can to as far north as we can, maybe over a couple of streams. Because quite frankly, I've, I've got a week off for Christmas and I'll be bored. Blimey, we're actually on time. Well, I'll be just... Um, where, okay. There's people on the roof. There's people on the roof. There's people... That can't be safe. Uh, right. Stop at Palmdale. Six miles. So Palmdale's our penultimate stop, I think. Yeah, Palmdale then Lancaster. Uh, Mardin, hi. We're playing Train Sim World 4. Exactly as it says in the title. Right, so six miles to Palmdale, 45 limit approaching, then a 49 straight after that. We're in a slight downhill grade. use the train brakey thing to see if that will actually slow me down. Um, no. Maybe yes. Uh, the game's from Steam, yes. Um, right, so five miles to Palmdale. We got a huge, hang on wipers back on a huge increase in speed in 1.7 miles at least a dynamic control thing is actually maintaining my speed a little bit Uh, it's not that. Exclamation mark TSW4 PC. Because there's the PC version and the console version. Or exclamation mark TSW4. No, TSW, not Train World Sim.
No. There's a four in there somewhere, Trent. Third time lucky. There we go. Dean got it. <laughs> you tried, Trent. Letters are hard. Well, they are. Is this game for money? Well, yes. Absolutely. Nothing's free in this world. Right, so we've got a yellow in a mile. I really hope we don't get a red. And we got six minutes before we do at Palmdale. Right, those are off. Yeah, no caps, please. Although it's still slightly raining. Right. We can come off the breaky thing. That cells build a little bit of speed up. Then we go got a 55. I'll put the wipe back on again. And we've still got that yellow. No crossing bells there. I thought all crossings had bells in America land. That one did. Right, so there's our 55. The antelopes nicked them. Yeah, exactly. Might be able to hear them then. Alright. A little bit of the actual brake to bring the speed down. Yeah, what a really cool route this is. Leaving the hustle and bustle of LA and ending up right out here in the middle of nowhere. All right, two and a bit miles. I've got more speeding. Yeah, that one had bells on the crossing. Definitely a twisty old track. I just really hope they sort these lag issues out before too long. I hope it's something that comes in the full release update. There have been a lot of people posting a lot of bugs. Right. Palmdale down there. Red light down there. I think one of the ones we saw on Doncaster to Peterborough was that the front pantographs being used and it should be the rear one and that all the AI um, 801s are running on diesel with the pantograph up and at full line speed.
I really do hope we get get the Great Western extension because I've, I've been up and down that route quite a lot and been on trains where it switches from diesel to electric and it is quite cool. In fact, they do it on the move as well. Obviously, this time last week was uh, out and about on trains, including a very spur of the moment trip to Cardiff Bay at about 4 p.m. last Saturday, which ended up with us being on the 800s. Breaking into Palmdale. Where are we going to slightly overshoot? I'd call that acceptable. <coughs> All the carriages are on the uh, on the platform. I'd say that's fine. Yeah, I did stop before the red. That would be a nightmare, wouldn't it? Run a red all this far in. wait to 11.43 so we are still on time I can't believe that I thought after a two and a bit hour run we were going to be really really late I still got a red though I wonder if we're waiting or whether it's just waiting to that will change once the doors go and we're back on time again All right lock the doors Yeah, got the green. Okay, final stop then. Lancaster. Seven miles, eight minutes. Bert lives. He's been dead a long time. That's a lot of traffic waiting at that crossing. Or Penny. Or she's wherever Rod Stewart is. I don't know where he's based, wherever he's in America. Which I think, no, I think he lives in the UK. He's got a huge model railway as well, isn't he? That's his hobby. Yeah, he likes model railways. And there's the um, music producer from the 80s um, that's into his... Um, um, trains as well. Pete Waterman. Yeah, Pete Waterman. He's into his trains as well. Yeah, Rod Stewart's a, a big model railway fan. Uh, go on the Googles. Um, one of the railway magazines did a feature, I think, in, in his loft or somewhere in his house. He's got a massive model railway.
Right, looks like we've got a fairly easy run now, all the way to Lancaster in the rain. It's definitely a bit misty out there. Oh, I, I think he lives out in the country somewhere, so his loss is probably huge. Oh yeah, a bit of volumetric fog. It does look good. Or volumetric vog. It's like quite an easy run with the station straight in front of us. Unless we do deviate slightly. And based on these speeds, we're going to be there early as well. Right, two miles, we've got a yellow. I hope that means at the station we've got a red. Uh, does track IR work? Yeah, I don't use it in this. Um, but yeah, I can turn it on. It does work with Train Sim World and Train Sim. Uh, I use it in Train Sim. I don't know why I don't use it in Train Sim World. Um, I think because when you're walking around, it's odd. So I just leave it off in Train Sim World. Yeah, I, there's lots of things in this that they have tweaked. Again, someone was saying yesterday, is it the same with Train Sim World 3? Is it actually a new release? You know, originally when Train Sim World 3 came out, uh, me and a lot of other people were saying it was just Train Sim World 2.5. My initial thought with this is that it was just Train Sim World 3.5. Um, the routes, okay, for me, two out of three uh, are good. Um, I just, I think, although the UK one's modelled well, I'm not a fan of it. I quite like this. Whether it's one you would do often. Right, we got a mile and we got a 40. Yeah, fo I don't know, photo mode is good, but I'd still rather just take a Steam screenshot. You've trained Sim on, on your PC for the last eight months. And it's, the problem is, it's one of those things, and a bit like this, it only gets better with more routes. You know, you buy this, you get the three routes that come with it. How long um, before you're going to want more routes? So it's one of those things that, to make it better, you need lots of routes. I'm quite fortunate that I've got every route available. Um well for train sim world three which will then port across to four so it does give you oh yeah uh, it does give you variety uh jonas uh thanks very much for the follow welcome to the madness is my east coast mainline still laggy they're all laggy it's a theme It is a good deal. Um, if you think of it as just... If you've got Train Sim World 3, if you think of it as a way of getting a better version of Train Sim World 3 with three extra routes and two extra trains for 39 quid, it's a bargain. Yeah. Um, so I tried the Neverka Dresden this morning and that was laggy, which is a Train Sim World 3 route in four. Um, I'm interested to try... Um, and see what a Train Sim World 3 route officially is like in this, which we'll do on Wednesday. 
and then I will do some side-by-side -side comparisons if it's still laggy. Do the same route in 3 and 4. But we have quite literally reached the end of the line. Oh, that looks good. The way the light's shining through the rain. I, and I love the fact they've all got their umbrellas up. Yeah, really like this. So you got used to the, the coffee machine toilet noises. All right, passengers are loading or unloading. Yeah, it does need some optimization. Seventy six point five miles. So yeah, that's a pretty lengthy route. Um two hours and thirteen minutes. That's uh, that's pretty good. We we like that. That's definitely definitely good. And ended up um early. Ended up a minute early at Lancaster. That's not bad after that amount of time, is it? That's that's pretty good. Um, what I'll do is we'll show you. I'm not actually going to go anywhere. Um, but we'll show you what the inside's like of the train. I even lag you when you're walking. So it's a double decker, which is modelled very well. So you've got this little half thing here, and then you've got the top deck up here, which is pretty cool. Um, then what we'll do is if we go, where do we come in? Oh, down there, wasn't it? Yeah, there we go. All right, if we go down to the back. So what would happen now is when you get to Lancaster, the loco wouldn't run around and then haul it back the other way. What you do is you come down the other end to here and you go down you go down here and you've got this little tiny compartment where you drive it from from this end. So you control it from up here which is a long way up and go back the other way with the loco behind pushing you rather than pulling you so you'd make the return journey that way and yeah services schedule start at 1205 so now you could just spawn back in and go back and do the the other way if you wanted to um actually what we'll do before we end for those that haven't seen it um let's go and spawn a train in which again is the cool thing in uh, in timetable mode that you can do. So if I run out here, what I can do is I can spawn a new train. So if we wanted to, we could put the Flying Scotsman in here. Which is not letting me because something else wants this. No, something else is about to use this track. Down. Oh, no, there we go. We can do it that way. Not enough length. There we go. So, yeah. I think it's because I was too close to the buffers down there. So, we've now put the Flying Scotsman in. And what I could do now is climb aboard. Uh, 
take control of this. Release the brakes. And in theory, it's wet, so it's going to be difficult. Come on. There we go. We can now run the Flying Scotsman, albeit backwards. Although we have got a red behind us, it's not liking it because I'm on the wrong track. But there you go. So that's how spawning works. And if you didn't want to do it, so I could now get out. Run up to the front of the train, click tab, delete the train. And then if you wanted to, you could just go and put another train on here. Um, so although it won't work in theory, because we haven't got any power, we could put the Azuma <laughs> on here, but it won't go anywhere because we haven't got any power. So yeah, the ability to spawn the train in, and then we get, we're still in timetable mode. So the AI has now taken over that train. So at 12.05, when departure time arrives, that train will leave and go back that way. We could then, in theory, after it, spawn a train in once the, the signals have gone, because um, we can now, if we come to the map, um i zoom in i select my train um oh hang on other end i can't select a path because it hasn't got a path damn it you should be able to then if i was on the right track that could go somewhere i would set the path to my destination and just get in and drive but because this track i'm on hasn't got any pathing i can't do it because it can't work out a way of getting me there. But yeah, we'll have a play around with the uh, whole spawning in of trains when we get all of the diesel stuff um, across next week, um, which is really cool. So yeah, so the, the AI has now got hold of this and will uh, depart with this train at five past, which is pretty cool. Uh, so there we go. Uh, a full line run uh, in Antelope Valley. And what an awesome line it is too. Uh, really, really like that. Uh, more Train Sim World 4 back on Tuesday night where we're going to do um, a look at the reworked uh, Neverka Dresden, which has been reworked for uh, Train Sim World 4. On Tuesday, all the content from Train Sim World 3 will then uh, appear in here. So Wednesday, and my plan is to... Uh, take the uh, 125 on uh, Peterborough to Doncaster. Um, so uh, we'll give that a go with some diesel fun. And then back next Saturday uh, for more. Uh, there we go. Uh, next stream, though, is back in about four and a bit hours time uh, with some trucking, some ETS2, some trucking and tunes uh, tonight between 6 and 6.30. A couple of hours of trucking uh, and playing some music as well. So tune in for that one. Songs starting with the letter S for song uh, and then back tomorrow lunchtime for some farming uh, and then back on Tuesday as I say for some trains in World 4. Uh, so thanks to line chat uh, for keeping me company for the last uh, well nearly two hours and 40 minutes uh, really enjoyed that uh, we got attacked by a bot in the middle there uh, so I can't really do the credits uh, but thanks to everybody that followed uh, and to I think Liam uh, that resubscribed um, earlier thank you very much indeed uh, and to the mods for doing well nothing as normal um because letters are hard uh but there we go i'll be back with some idiots uh, later on this evening uh, to do some trucking uh, until then if you have been 
Thanks very much for watching.